just to tell you as an aside now it is not uh, among the topics of today but it deserves to be mentioned just even if you arrive to 100% code coverage it does not mean that your code works perfectly why because you do not have uh, a certainty about the quality of your tests and here if you would like to be sure that your tests are good quality besides the code coverage. I was saying that code coverage is one metric for providing your know, test quality. So if you would like to have safety about the uh, quality of your tests, you should go by mutation testing, mutating testing. This means that uh, you run a suite of tests and there is a tool that will modify a little, for example, in Java, the bytecode, will run the test again and it will expect this test to fail because if a test is well written then if you modify uh, the code a little here and there you're expecting this test to fail and we are moving to our practical demonstration uh, we have taken this time in order to introduce uh, the ideas the idea of behavior driven development the ideas of what code coverage and uh, uh, what code coverage is and why it is important why we should care about it and we are saying that uh, we have some uh, application that uh, is working with credit offers and with customers and you see here that we have a customer that is described by the name and by the fact that he or she is VIP or not. A credit offer has a list of customers that have been assigned to it. And you may add a customer or remove a customer from this credit offer. But you remember that we have two types of credit offers. So we have economic credit offer. So we say here, according to the business logic, you remember those schemas that uh, uh, we have shown. When you would like to add a customer to the economic credit offer, no problem. You will always allow to add that customer. If you would like to remove the customer from an economic credit offer, then you can remove him or her only if he or she is not a VIP. Otherwise, once you have assigned that uh, customer to the credit offer, you cannot remove a VIP any longer. And we have the business credit offer with the same policy, add customer and remove customer. So the business credit offer allows only VIP customers to be added to it. If you would like to remove a VIP customer, cannot be uh, removed any longer. So once it is, he or she is there, cannot be removed. So this is the policy that we have provided. We have shown those logical schemas. And now we take a look at how our tests are written and how they work. You see here, this is a test called bank test. And we have one, two, three, four tests because we have two types of credit offers and two types of customers and two multiplied by two equals four. And this is an application that could have been developed TDD or test driven development way. So you have economic credit offer, usual customer. And here we have our test that is doing something and is expecting something. We have an economic credit offer and a VIP customer. And we have some actions into the test and we have some expectations. And the same for business credit offer and usual customer, the same for business credit offer 
and VIP customer. Are these tests useful? Of course, they are very useful, but they have some limitations. You see here that uh, the tests are not telling you what you are expected to get, which is the expected behavior. Say here, I'm testing an economy credit offer with a usual customer, but what for? Why? Why am I testing and what am I expecting? The same here, test economy credit offer, VIP customer, but we have no idea about what is expected. We are testing and we are expecting some outputs. And we should say here that in the early days of BDD that has been uh, invented by Dan North in the early 2000s, the developers of his projects decided to write here uh, a test with a more significant and longer name saying should expect this and that. The test, the name of the method was speaking by itself, saying I'm expecting something and I would like to communicate this to you so that you understand why you are doing this and what you're expecting. And uh, Dan North and his team, uh, when they were working this way, they have understood, they have discovered that this was something that was really simplifying their life. It was providing much better understanding of what those tests were supposed to do. Dan North named at that time the way they were working, not TDD, no TDD any longer, but moved to behavior-driven development. And this is the beginning of the behavior-driven development. But you see here, coming back to, to our application, we see that we have four tests that are saying what we are testing, but may not say what we are expecting. Let's run this test suite. I'm right-clicking here, and I'm going to run it using code coverage because this is uh, important. I was saying that we would like to move to BDD uh, approach, but we would like at the same time to keep in mind that uh, we are not affecting one of the important test quality metrics, meaning the code coverage. And we see here that we have 100% uh, code coverage. This is really cool. Just uh, to let you know that also the structure of the code is allowing us, the code is testable. So uh, the code exposes itself and uh, we were able to achieve this 100% code coverage. This was the uh, way TDD could have worked, or this is something that you may receive as an already existing application and you have to deal with it. You have to understand what uh, is going on and you have to understand the business logic in order to maintain the application or in order to add new features. And we would like to show that we can do better if we approach the idea of behavior-driven development. And uh, we move here to the second application that is called Bank Application BDD First Step because we would like to demonstrate how uh, we are doing uh, our work both uh, with uh, JUnit 5, only with JUnit 5, so this would be a first step. And then we are going to move to the Cucumber approach, which is another step. Let's see here that we have exactly the same application with credit offers and with customers. And if we look here, well, we see that the structure of the code of the test code is very different to what we were providing here at the beginning. You see here we had four tests. Of course, they were all concentrated within one single uh, class. 
But if we go here, we see that we have a hierarchy of tests. And we are taking advantage of the benefits and of the new features provided by JUnit 5 in order to build something, I would say, really beautiful. We have a test and inside it we have another test. And inside it we have another test class. Of course, class inside class, meaning nested classes or inner, inner classes, exists from the beginnings of Java. But JUnit 5 comes with this idea of nested tests, and we are using here this nested annotation, which is a JUnit 5 annotation that is provided by the version 5 of the testing framework. So we have here a test class inside another test class, and we are building a hierarchy of tests starting from the top, from this bank test. And you may ask yourself when uh, may you consider to use this hierarchy of tests? The answer is similar to uh, the question, when should I consider to have a nested or an inner class? Not nested inner uh, test necessarily, but a nested or inner class in Java. I was saying that X exists from the early days of Java. When two classes are very tightly coupled, then you may consider putting them one inside the other, so a nested class. Here, you see that we are having an economic credit offer, and inside it we have a usual customer. Here we have a tightly coupling. So the usual customer and the, the VIP customer are tightly coupled. To the economic credit offer in the sense that we are testing them together. So it really makes sense that you put a test inside another one and keep them nested. The same here, a little uh, lower, we have nested business credit offer test and we have uh, usual customer this time with uh, in relation with the business credit offer and VIP customer, this time in relation to the business credit offer. And uh, if uh, you take a look here, you see also we are using this display name annotation. The same here, display name annotation, the same here, display name annotation. This is also a JUnit 5 annotation. It allows us to show the test in a nice way. I was saying that in the early days uh, of uh, BDD, Dan Norse was using those long method names. That is not always convenient, but we can provide this meta information instead of putting here, for example, a long name, saying exactly in plain English, it's plain English what the expectations are. Then you can add and remove him from an economy credit offer when we have a usual customer. So you see here that we are able to read in plain English the entire scenario. And of course, you are recognizing here the given when then keywords. The test, uh, uh, the, the then part is uh, including the assertions, meaning the verifications, what is expecting, and we are using here this assert all method, which is also specific to JUnit 5, which is the advantage of this assert all versus putting this assert equals assert true one under the other. If we look here, this is what we were doing in our first approach. The big advantage is that no matter if, let's presume, this test fails, 
the tests that are following it are still executed. So this was not happening here. If this test fails, the subsequent one are no longer executed. So this assert all is taking care of executing all the tests, no matter if uh, one or more of them are failing. So you see, this is a really new way of writing tests. And we're seeing that uh, we are making a first step towards behavior-driven development. Let's run the tests. Let's see how they look like. 